Hi guys, it's Steph from My Driver Classic, and today I'm going out in the coolest thing, probably, in fact, I know it's the coolest thing I've ever driven. It's a 1967 Comma van, and I've never driven a van before, and this is quite cool, so in this video today, I'm gonna to show you around the outside. Because this is super rare, so I'm gonna give you guys a really good appreciation of what it's like, bring you inside so you can have a look at the interior, and can you believe there's a whole camping section as well, which I'm gonna show you. We're gonna start the engine up, which, by the way, is located just here. I'm definitely going to show you that too. So I'm just going to show you that there and I'll bring the camera back up and once we've done all that we're going to take the van out for a drive which I'm a little bit nervous about because it's something totally different to what I'm used to but let's give it a shot because honestly this might be the coolest getaway that we've ever had. I have never actually gone out in a comma van or seen a comma van before but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what it was like on the outside before we jumped inside had a good look round and took her out for a spin you know I am itching to get this van out on the road because I really like it I think it I think it feels very 60s actually and I love by the way how those little wheels are tucked in spirit of adventure if you're wondering is the name that Henry has given the van and I'm just blown away by how nice this is and uh, you may have noticed that the roof looks like it's going to pop up well I'm going to show you what that looks like because it's really really clever and it doesn't look too strange when it pops up and it doesn't look like it's too difficult to do Henry said he's going to help me with it because let's face it we all know what a klutz I am and I'm going to end up breaking it and I'm, I'm not going to break something on this campsite but as we look around I hope you're getting a bit of a feel for it it seems very well put together and it feels very sturdy all the lines on it are very nice and you know as you look around all the panel all the panel gaps and stuff are really good on it I know you know if you look at a modern car you might say oh well actually it's not but for vehicles of this age this is very it's very well put together if i'm honest and as we have a quick look round i'm going to show you the inside as well the camping bit before we have a look around the inside, I asked Henry to pop the roof up so that you guys could see it as well and it gives us a little bit more light so we can have a look around the inside. But I love the fact it's striped and I think it adds a real touch of character to the vehicle. I really don't know what I was expecting when we popped in. Um, I, don't, I don't know what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be really different. Um, but it's all very neatly laid out and as we have a look inside i'm going to show you all the different compartments here look you've even got your little attractive clip on heater there needless to say that is an aftermarket feature but as we have a look inside and apologies that the sun seems to be making filming ever more difficult you can even see you've got a two um a two ring hob there you've got a little grill you've got a sink and look you've even got your cupboard sorry henry to expose all your belongings but you've got all your bits in there and it's all very neatly laid out and here's the roof section that i was talking about so you can see how that pops up and again you've got really good you've got you know you've got really good kind of light coming in it doesn't feel stuffy in any way and that's one of the things that I thought it would feel I thought it would feel stuffy um but you've got everything right down to kind of your electric points as well which is really good and you've got a table and uh, for those of you that are wondering where you sleep at night that table folds down and it becomes a bed and you could get kind of well ambitiously you could probably get three people in here um and if you start somebody i mean it's not exactly legal nowadays but if you start somebody on that on top of that engine you probably get three people in here too so i'm going to bring you in the front of the van and show you what that looks like too Apologies for my nail varnish there being all chipped. We're camping and I feel like my level of personal upkeep has somehow dropped dramatically in the last 24 hours. Anyway, back to this comma van. I just, I just think it's really nice because I quite like a basic vehicle and this is very basic. And as we have a look, you'll see that it's very minimalistic in terms of controls. It's very minimalistic in terms of dials. I mean, a temperature gauge is good. I wish I had one of those in the Morris Minor. Um, very good to spot the early signs of overheating. And um, so we have a look around, you'll see that it's just as basic as can be. And there's the engine in the middle. So let me show you what that looks like too. 
I just couldn't believe it when I got told that the engine was inside the car. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. You've got the radiator and then you've got your engine, of course. I tell you what, this would be handy if you needed to fix something and it was raining outside. But yeah, it doesn't look too out of place, I don't think. Guys, I love hearing how different engines sound. And this one's a little bit special because it's certainly not an engine I've encountered before. So we're gonna start the car up now and we're gonna have a listen. But one of the first things that um, I'm gonna tell you before we start the car is that it's a very different system to what I'm used to. Um, so you've got the key here, which again is a little bit weird because I'm used to it kind of being here or here. And then once you turn the key, you then got to press this black button. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to give it a little bit of a rev as well so you can hear how the engine sounds. So we've ticked it over. So if you hear, that sounds quite meaty. So this means that now we're ready to set off on the road and see what this comma van's really like. Guys, what can I say? I'm out driving this amazing comma van and it feels very like, I feel like I'm in the mystery machine. It's amazing. And I'm kind of driving around and I'm sitting above the axle so it's quite floaty. Um, but I really like it. It's, um, it's quite a surreal experience. And uh, the middle mirror, so the rear view mirror up here, I'm not really able to use that. It's not really working for me. But the, uh, the side mirrors are great. And I feel kind of, I guess this is what it feels like to drive a bus because um, this steering wheel is massive and I'm kind of just like this but it's cool it's cool and I really really like it guys 
all the parts that you need and it's just incredible really because honestly this is a really special van and I feel so very privileged to be out driving it today. Now I'm coming to the end of my drive and all I can say is, is that I've had such an amazing time being out in this car because, well, van even, because uh, it's just been so much fun and it's, it's something so very different to me. I'm so used to, I love vehicles in the 60s but usually all I ever get to test is kind of your normal cars and stuff and this has been such a breath of fresh air for me and I've enjoyed it immensely and um, I would honestly say like if you're out there and camper vans now are considerable money but if you're looking and you're thinking oh I've been thinking about getting a VW and, and you think I don't have enough to stretch why don't you look at a common van because everything seems to add up to this it's fun it's so attractive and it's so much cheaper as well Henry's been talking me through how much they cost and yeah a mint condition is going to cost you a lot more but in general you could break into the world of common vans at quite a low entry level in terms of vintage and classic camper vans and I definitely think if it's something you're considering or you're looking at for you I definitely think a common van is a very good option. As I drive around in this what I can only describe as mystery machine um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about comma a little bit about the van as well and um, the first thing I've got to tell you is is unfortunately unlike some of the other vehicles and cars that I've reviewed there's not masses of information online so I've had to do quite a lot of digging um, but I found out a little bit to tell you because this is a very special van and I want to give it the credit it deserves because it's been fantastic to drive and hopefully if there's some of you out there that are looking for you know maybe a camp or something a little bit different I will hopefully be able to persuade you to try a comma van instead so comma were British and they were part of the Roots group and Comer existed from 1905 through to 1979 and unlike some of the other Roots group marks, Comer specialised in things like vans, trucks, military vehicles and buses and everything was built on a purpose-built site down in Luton which for those of you tuning in from abroad is down south, not too far from London actually. Now, in the 1970s, um, Chrysler took over Roots Group and they phased out Comma and they replaced it with Dodge. Um, it's not a case of it went bust or anything like that or didn't really have a shady path like British Lane and it literally just got phased out. Now, as I kind of said earlier in the video, I wanted to let you guys know how many of these were still on the road and how many are still running. And um, I use a website called howmanyleft.com, which is not always accurate, but it's a pretty good indication of how many vehicles are out there of a certain mark. You can get a bit of a feel for it. And um, I could only search by manufacturer. I could only search a comma. You couldn't even search. Um, you couldn't even search for a vehicle. So in total, there are. It says so. Take it with a pinch of salt, but it's not usually too far wrong. There are 963 comma vehicles on the road including this one and there's nearly 400 on Sorn but again it's it's that crazy thing that I can't even tell you how many Olympians are on the road which moves me on to tell you exactly which model this is it is a comma van but it is a Halet Olympian most commonly known as an Olympian and um one of my favourite things is 70s advertising and this was advertised as offering you 118 holiday days a year which they worked out as weekends and it was classed as living in comfort because you had curtains, a freestanding table, beds, reclining seats, washing and cooking facilities and the ability to have some light and air in the, in the van which is both ridiculous and endearing. So overall fantastic vehicle. Uh, not as much history as I would like to give, but hopefully I've given you a great indication of just how amazing and special this comma van really is. Guys, what can I say, but it has been such a cool afternoon driving this amazing comma van and I've had such a laugh. And I really hope you've enjoyed having a look round and coming on the drive with me and seeing just what it's like to head back to the 60s and camp in style. Now, if you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it, please click the like button. And of course, any comments you've got about comma vans or any questions about the channel, pop it in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe because new videos go up every Wednesday Wednesday and every Sunday. Now until next time, take care and drive safely.